In this video, we will look at how we can add some visual elements in our text table. And these can be in the form of KPIs, spark lines, or conditional formatting using colors or shapes. We will create the sample text table you see on the screen by the end of this video. We will be using the sample superstore data set that comes with your Tableau installation if you want to follow along. I'll see you in a bit. One of the most common ways we present data is through text tables or by having numeric values laid out in tabular format. Often, we use tables because we need to see the exact numbers. But other times, it may be out of habit too. We may just be used to seeing the actual values, but we have to realize that we may be missing out on some of the immediate important numbers. For regular tables like these, we need to focus our attention and scan through the numbers maybe a few times to see if there's anything that we should be paying attention to. Let's quickly check how we can create a simple text table in Tableau before moving on to adding additional visual elements. I've already connected to the sample superstore dataset in Tableau. If you need to find this file, it should be under your My Tableau Repository folder under Data Sources, the version of Tableau that you're using, and there's an Excel file there. One way to create text tables in Tableau is by dragging over your dimensions to your rows or column shelves and creating that initial grid. For example, if we want to look at subcategory, we can drag that over. Now we can double click on the measures that we want to show up in our text table. For example, we can double click on sales and profit and discount. If we want to rearrange our measure columns, we can do so by rearranging the pills in the measure values card. For example, let's move discount down and have sum of sales as the first column. And this is our simple text table. We can enhance our tables though by adding some visual elements. Adding these markers allow us to quickly check anything that may require our attention and possibly understand the data a little bit faster than just by scanning through numbers. This particular text table that you're seeing right now has a few elements. The sales column has a faint bar graph in the background, as well as triangle indicators that highlight subcategories that meet or exceed a threshold. The sales trend column has what we call a spark line, or very small line charts without labels or coordinates. This is meant to show general activities or trends over time. The profit column shows conditional text colors, red for negative values and black for positive ones. And the discount column shows conditional background colors based on discounts that are meeting or exceeding a threshold. These are the five big strategies we will cover. We will also go over additional tips and tricks that you can use in different areas, not just with text tables. I hope you will consider watching the whole video, but if you want to jump to specific topics, I have added chapters in the description below. Please also note that we will be using calculated fields and parameters as we go along. If you need a refresher, I will be adding links to the related videos on these topics in the description as well. Let us start with a tip. We should remember that we can add text symbols in Tableau wherever text is accepted, like labels or tooltips, titles, and calculated fields. We can use this simple tip in adding a simple KPI or a symbol to highlight something. The trick here is to create a calculated field with any text symbol that we want to use to accompany our numbers. We can also change the color. Let's take a look at this in Tableau. Let us start by creating a simple text table. Let's drag over subcategory to rows and let's double click on sales. Please note that I've gone ahead and created three numeric parameters that we can use for the demos. There is one parameter for a sales threshold, another parameter for a profit threshold, and a third parameter for a discount threshold. For this first task, perhaps we simply want to identify any of the subcategories that have sales that meet or exceed the sales threshold. So how can we do that? There are many resources for getting text symbols. So I've gone ahead and picked one of these websites. So for example, if I simply want a circle, I can simply copy this circle and use this in my calculated field. So I'm going to click on this. It's going to be copied to the clipboard. When I go back to Tableau, I can use this in my calculated field. So let's create a calculated field in here. So on the drop down, create calculated field. 
Let's call this sales threshold circle, sales threshold circle. So if the sum of sales is greater than or equal to our sales threshold, then we want this circle to show up. Else, we're just going to leave it as an empty string. Let's end this calculated field. Let's click on apply. Let's click OK. And we can simply add this calculated field in our text. So let's drag this over. However, this distorts the display a little bit because now you have sum of sales and the circle in two lines. We simply need to move this circle to the beginning of the line. So they have to sit on the same line. So let's click on text, click on the ellipses, rearrange these values so that they're sitting on the same line. And we can choose to change the color of the symbol or of the circle. So in here, maybe it's just going to be an orange and perhaps make it bold. Click OK. And this is our very simple text symbol. We can use this same trick to adding up and down arrows with our numbers as well. I do have a separate video going through this trick in a little bit more detail. I will link it up in the card above and description down below. But let's also demonstrate the up and down arrows with two different colors. Let's set up our table for profit. Let's drag over subcategory. Let's double click on profit. And in here, we are going to create two calculated fields, one for the up arrow and one for the down arrow. So let's create one, create calculated field. Let's call this one profit threshold. Call this up arrow. Let's also copy the up arrow or a triangle that's pointing upwards. So let's copy this. If profit is greater than the profit threshold, then we want the arrow. This time around though, we're not going to have an else statement. If the condition is not met, we're going to let the value be null. So let's just end this. We're going to duplicate this for the down arrow. Let's copy our down arrow or our triangle that's pointing downwards. Let's copy this over. Duplicate this calculated field, duplicate. Let's edit, rename this to down arrow. And in here, we're simply going to reverse the operation. So if it's less than the profit threshold, then this is going to be a down arrow. Let's click OK. Now we're going to add both of these to text as well. So profit up arrow to text and profit down arrow to text. We are also going to do the same trick. We're going to put them all in the same line and color them differently. So let's go to text, click on the ellipses, make sure that all of these values are in the same line. So we have profit, make sure these are all in the same line. And the up arrow, we can color that differently. So perhaps we want a blue for the up arrow. And for the down arrow, perhaps we want this to be red. Click OK. And this is our very simple table that has KPIs. It helps us quickly identify which ones are meeting a profit threshold and which ones are not meeting a profit threshold. Things, however, can get complicated if you need to show multiple measures in your text table. For example, if we need to add sales in addition to profit, we may decide to double click on the second measure, let's say sales. Let's fix this up. So under text, we're going to add our measure values this time. Click OK. If we add our up and down arrow, they will always be specific to one measure. So if we add the up arrow and the down arrow, it's going to start coloring not just profit, but also sales using the same parameter. So let's put the up arrow as well, and let's color these appropriately. So on the, under text in here, measure values, maybe that's black. Down arrow should be red, and maybe up arrow should be blue. But in here, we can see that sales has a totally different threshold. It's $200,000, but the arrows always follow profit. One popular trick to get around this problem when you have multiple measures is by creating our own axes. We can do this by creating a calculated field with a number. Technically, this could be any number, but it's common to use zero. Note in here that the decimal place is on purpose because this means that the axis that gets created is a float or one that accepts decimal places. And this allows for finer incremental changes should we need to change the range of the axis. When you have an axis, when you put that in your rows or your columns, you get a marks card 
for each of these axes, which means we can independently manage our measures. One more trick that usually goes hand in hand with creating our own axes is by using the Gantt mark. This term may sound familiar. Gantt charts are common when we are managing projects and visualizing timelines and dependencies. This is an example of a Gantt chart. The length of the bar typically corresponds to how long that task is estimated to take. Right now, this sounds very, very similar to a bar chart. So why not a bar chart? And this can be best explained with a demonstration. Let us start by creating a calculated field for our axes. So on the dropdown, create calculated field. Let's call this axes. We are going to use a minimum of 0.0, .0 because we want this axis to be a decimal place. Now you're probably asking, well, why not just use 0.0? .0? In here, if we simply put 0.0, .0 and click on OK, and if we display this axis, by default, we're still going to have choices on whether to make this a sum, an average, a minimum, a maximum. And you could always argue that zero is always going to be zero. But if we have less variables to work with, the easier it is and the more consistent it's going to be. So let's remove this and edit our axes. So edit. And we're going to simply enclose this in minimum. M-I-N. Click OK. Now let's display subcategory. So let's drag subcategory, place that on rows, and we're going to put two axes. First one, second one. Remember that the big reason we're creating an axis is so that we can independently manage the mark, the label, and the properties that we're going to use for each measure we want to display. So the first pill gets its own marks card. The second pill also gets its own marks card. To compare the bar and the Gantt, let's set first the marks. So for the first pill, we're going to make this into a bar. And for the second pill, we're going to make this into a Gantt or a Gantt bar. You should also notice that the icons have now changed. For this comparison, let's take a look at labels and see how they're different between a bar and a Gantt. Let's go to the All Marks card and let's display sales as a label. Let's now compare how alignment is different between a bar and a Gantt. Why are we starting with alignment? Well, usually when we're dealing with numbers, if they are in a text table, we want these numbers to be flushed to the right. We want all the ones, the tens, the hundreds, we want all of those places to be aligned. Right now, the default alignment is not great because you have hundred thousands that are aligned with ten thousands and aligned with single thousands. Remember that the first axis is actually our bar graph. And the second axis is our Gantt. So for our bar graph, let's go to Label. Let's change the alignment to left, to center, and to right. And we can see in here, there is no easy way for us to flush all of the numbers to the right. This is different for a Gantt bar. So if we go to the second axis, Pay attention to what happens to these numbers. Let's go to Label. Under Alignment, we can Right Align, which is the default right now. We can Center Align, and we can also Left Align. This Left Alignment is usually ideal when we are working with text tables. So the Gantt bar allows us to easily do this. So if we want to conditionally format text, maybe by changing the color or the font style, we can use this trick. We can create an invisible Gantt and create a calculated field per color or style that we want to display. Let's take a look at this in action. So let's set up our table. Let's put subcategory. We're going to add our axes. In this case, we're going to make sure that this is a Gantt. So under mark, we're going to set it to Gantt bar. And we are going to create two calculated fields. One calculated field will return the number when the number is equal or above the profit threshold and the other calculated field will be for values that are below the profit threshold. Let's create the first one, create calculated field. Let's call this profit threshold equal or above, equal or above. And if sum of profit is greater than or equal to our profit threshold, then we will simply display that value and end. Click OK. 
Let's duplicate this calculated field and set this next one for values that are below the threshold. So edit, this is going to be below, and we are simply going to reverse the operator. So this one has to be less than, and click OK. The reason we are creating two calculated fields is if and only if you want to be able to control multiple attributes or multiple properties. For example, if you want one to have a totally different font altogether, one is bold, one is italic, one is normal, this is the only time you're going to use this. However, if what you need is a simple toggle, you can technically just use a single calculated field. So now let's put both of these calculated fields onto our label. So profit below. And you can see that it only marks the ones that are below the threshold. Let's also put profit threshold equal or above to label. Now we are going to set the alignment. So click on label, set the alignment to left, and we are going to make manual adjustments in the text. So click on the ellipses, make sure they're in the same line. And perhaps when it is below, we want this to be bold, maybe even a different font. So in here, change it a different font and change the color. So from here, make this red and click OK. Now, when we are using the axis trick, we typically want to make the Gantt invisible. So we are going to turn down the opacity also. We typically don't want any of the lines, so no axis lines, no zero lines. So let's set that up first. So under color of Gantt, we're going to set the opacity to zero. And under format lines, we're going to set the grid lines to none. And we are also setting the zero lines to none. When we are finalizing our text tables that has multiple measures and different kinds of formatting, we're also going to typically hide the axes. So when you right click on the axes, you can uncheck the show header. So right click, uncheck show header. It's going to look like this. We may also decide to conditionally format the background color. Let's compare the bar and the Gantt marks first. Let's set up our worksheet. Let's drag over subcategory. We're going to use two axes again. So first axis, second axis. First axis has to be a bar and second one is a Gantt. Let's add our labels again. So under all, I'm just going to drag over sales, put that on label. The challenge here is that the length of the bar in a bar graph is determined by the axes, but we have an axis with a value of zero. So if we go to this marks card, if we decide to put sales on size, it actually doesn't affect the length of the bar. What it naturally affects is the thickness of the bar. Let's take a look at this again. If we were to simply take sales and put that as another axis, we are going to see that the value of sales is the one that determines how long the bar is. If we put sales on size, what it affects is the thickness of the bar. And that's not what we want. We simply want to simulate that the background color is changing. So let's take this out. For a Gantt bar, we can make some minor adjustments. What we can do is we can either extend the bar by one, because remember, this is an axis. That's your zero. This is all of the negative numbers. That's all of the positive numbers. And a Gantt bar will extend the length based on the axis. So if I want a rectangle or a bar that to appear to the left of the zero axis, I can simply create a value that is negative. So for example, in here, let's create another calculated field. And I'm just going to call this minus one. This is just going to be the minimum of negative one. Let's click OK. And let's put this negative one to the size of the Gantt bar. And in here, we've already simulated some kind of a background color. So for this next strategy, the trick is to create an invisible Gantt again. We're going to set the size to something that is negative, And we're also going to add a transparent background color. Let's drag a new axis to our previous worksheet. So let's drag axis over. And this time around, for this second axis, we're going to use the average discount. So let's remove profit and replace this with discount. So drag discount over. Discount is coming over as average by default because the default property has been set. So when you right click on discount, default properties, aggregation, the aggregation is set to average. We have also already created our minus one value. So we can take the minus one and put that in the size of the Gantt bar. Now we can't see it, 
because we have set our color to transparent earlier. So we're just going to adjust the color again. So go to color and set the opacity of this axis to 100% so we can see the colors now. And we're going to adjust the alignment because what we want to do is for these numbers to be within the shaded area. So let's go to label. We're going to set the alignment this time to right. Now this still looks a little bit off because the numbers are still not in the shaded area. And this is because Tableau automatically adjusts the range of the axes. So let's just show the axis headers again. So in here on the drop down, show header, and let's edit the second axis. So in here, right click, edit axis. And we are going to see that Tableau has automatically adjusted the range so that the right boundary is past zero. So what we need to do is just simply fix the right boundary so it ends at zero, and that will force all of the labels to be within the shaded area. So under fixed, we're going to leave the left boundary as automatic, but the right one is going to be fixed to zero. And now we can see the numbers within the shaded area. So we're just going to make some adjustments right now. Make sure we are targeting the second axis. We're going to set the size so it's a little bit thicker so that there's more area coverage. And we are also going to create a calculated field that allows us to toggle the color. So create a calculated field. Let's call this discount threshold. This is above or below. So if the average discount is greater than or equal to our discount threshold, then it's going to be equal or above. Else, it's going to be below and end. Click OK. Now we're going to put this in color. So drag this field onto color. Now this works out if you want two different colors. However, if you want only certain conditions to be colored and the other ones to be not colored, there's a couple ways we can do that. For example, if we want anything that's below to be not colored, we can force the color to be white. So if we double click on this color palette, double click on below, and another double click on below, the HTML value or the hex value for white is six Fs. So let's change this. So in here, FF, 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 and click OK. Click OK again. So this may work. However, this doesn't work if you have a different background color. For example, if we go to format, shading, and change the shade to something else. Ideally, we should be able to just pick a transparent color. Now there is a way for us to incorporate transparent colors within Tableau. There are eight digit hex colors where the last two numbers specify transparency. So it's going to be our typical format. And if we want something to be transparent, the code is actually zero, zero. However, there is a slight problem. If we go back to Tableau and double click on the color palette, let's double click a color on the left hand side. The problem is we cannot type eight digits in this text box. It doesn't allow us. So the way to incorporate transparent colors in Tableau is by putting it in the color palette. So in your My Tableau repository where you have your preferences file, we can add a new color palette that uses this eight digit transparent color. I've gone ahead and created this in my preferences file. So I should be able to see the transparent color in my color palette. So on the drop down, I have the transparent color palette. So let me choose that. I simply need to select this value for below. So select below and click on this color and click OK. And now we can see it's actually not white. It is transparent. And we can prove this by changing the shading of the worksheet again. So if we change this to a different color altogether, we can see that the color for below is actually not white, it is transparent. The third strategy we're going to demonstrate is by using an embedded bar with a KPI. And the trick in here is actually a dual axis chart. So we're going to create a calculated field per color or shape that we want to display and overlay that in a faint bar chart. So let's set up our dual axis chart. Let's drag over subcategory. This time around, we're going to create our usual bar chart. We're going to drag over our measure, which is sales, onto columns. We're going to make sure that the mark is set to bar, not automatic, because we don't want this to change later on. And we're also going to change the color to light gray. We're going to add our own axis as well, because we want a shape. We want a triangle shape. 
Let us set our second axis to a shape, and we are going to use a triangle that points to the right. We have created a calculated field earlier that allows us to identify whether the sales value reaches a threshold, and we can technically reuse this. We can put this in color. So let's drag sales threshold onto color, and we are going to use the trick that we just learned. We're going to keep the color of the ones that have met the threshold, but we're going to make the other ones invisible. And we already have our transparent color, so we can just use that in our palette. So let's double click on our color palette, and we are going to set the first color to transparent. So select this item. Under color palette, we're going to choose transparent. And then we set that. Click OK. So now we have our triangles. The next thing we need to do is to create calculated fields for the actual sales values. We are going to use the same trick we did for the profit threshold, where we create two calculated fields, one for below and one for equal and above. So let me just quickly do that. Now we're going to put these two calculated fields in our label, make sure they're in the same line, and also adjust the colors. Once we have these set up, we just need to make this into a dual axis chart. So on the drop down of the second axis, we can select dual axis. We're also going to synchronize the axis. So right click on the sales axis, let's synchronize the axis, and now we just need to clean it up. We are going to take away the axis headers, and we're also going to remove the grid lines. So right click on the axis, uncheck show header. We're also going to go to format, lines, and we're going to set the grid lines to none. The fourth task is creating a simple spark line that allows us to see trends over time without having all the details. The trick here is to resize the chart to make it really small and taking away any of the headers, any of the axes, any of the labels. We can also optionally make the axis independent. There are technically ways to do this within the same table as your other KPIs, but it can really complicate your queries. So we're going to create this as a standalone chart. And we're simply going to put this together with all of the other KPIs later on in a dashboard. So let's create this. Let's drag over subcategory to rows. Let's right click drag order date onto columns and choose continuous month, which is fourth from the bottom. Click OK. Let's add sales. Let's put sales on the row shelf. Now we can resize the chart. We can adjust the width. Now we're also going to see that some of these charts are pretty flat. And this is because the range is uniform for all the axes. But we can right click on the axes, we edit the axes, and we can also set independent axis ranges for each row or column. So this is an option we can take if we want to emphasize the activity independently for each of the subcategories. Let's adjust the height. Let's take away any of the headers and any of the axes. So right click, uncheck show header. Let's right click on the axes, uncheck show header as well. Let's also adjust the thickness of the lines, maybe make this a little bit thinner. And let's take away all of the borders and all of the grid lines. So under Format, Lines, set grid lines to None. We're also going to go to Borders and set the row divider to None, as well as the column divider to None. We may also decide to take away the zero lines. So let's go back to Lines, Zero Lines, None. And again, maybe we can adjust the height a little bit more. And this is your simple spark line. The final task is to put all of these together. If we have many variations of visualizations that we want to incorporate in our text table, one way to put them together is by using dashboards. While we may be able to use just a single worksheet to accommodate multiple forms of KPIs and conditional formatting, we may unnecessarily complicate our sheet and introduce many calculations to account for the variations. The trick to putting these components together is to keep in mind that we want these to show up seamlessly as if they're part of a single table. Layout containers will be critical to use. We are also going to remove lines, headers, and create our own custom headers. 
Let's demonstrate this. Please note though that what I will show you is just one way we can accomplish this. There are other variations that you could try to accomplish something similar. We have to start with layout containers and we are going to have three main layout containers in here. There's going to be an outer layout container that contains two more layout containers. The first layout container will contain all of our custom headers and the second inner layout container will contain all of our charts. Let's go to a blank dashboard. Let's put in our first layout container. Let's drag over a vertical layout container. We're also going to add some temporary borders so that we can keep track of our layout containers. So under layout, let's add a border. Let's make our outer layout container gray. Let's go back to the dashboard tab and we are also going to introduce some placeholders. Blanks are great in layout containers as they can keep the orientation of the layout containers and they will also allow you to slot in additional components much easier later on. So let's stack two blanks first, first one, and then the second one. Now let's add our first horizontal layout container. So we drag that over. It's going to be in between your blanks. And again, let's put a temporary border here under layout. Let's put a temporary border. Let's set this one to red. Let's go back to the dashboard tab and also add our placeholders. So I'm going to put a blank. Let's resize this a little bit. Let's put another blank to the side to maintain the horizontal components. And this first container is actually going to contain our custom headers. So I will drag over a few text boxes and keep these as placeholders. Drag another one. And let's drag two more. Now let's set up our second layout container, which will contain our charts. So drag over horizontal container right underneath our headers. Let's add our temporary border. So under layout, border, make this one orange, go back to dashboard, and let's add our temporary placeholders. We have a blank, resize this a little bit, add another blank. Because we have our two main layout containers already in place, we can get rid of our blank placeholders. Delete this and delete the bottom one. Let's resize this. Now let us place all of our charts in our layout container. One, two, and three. Let's remove our blank placeholders again. So in here, remove this. The second one, remove this. Let's set the fit of each of the charts to entire view. So click on this, entire view, click on the second chart, entire view, click on the third chart, entire view. We are also going to remove all of the titles and the column headers for the second and the third charts. Right click, hide, right click, hide, and then third one, hide. Now let's go back to this worksheet. And under subcategory, uncheck show header. Let's go back to the dashboard. We're going to do the same thing for the third chart. So from here, go back to that sheet. Under subcategory, uncheck show header. Go back to the dashboard. And now it's just a matter of resizing these charts based on how we want to display them. So maybe we're going to make the spark line a little bit bigger. And once we are happy with this, we can start lining up our actual headers. We can remove some of our blank placeholders. So we can remove this one, adjust these. We can also fix the width of our custom header. So right click, fix the width. Do the same thing here. This is just going to be our sales trend. profit. And the final one is discount. Average discount. Once we're happy, we can take away our temporary borders. So double click on the handlebar to get to the container. And under layout, let's remove the border. Same thing for the bottom one, double click on the handlebar. Under layout, remove the border. 
And from here, we can choose to resize again until it fits our needs. And this is what our final text table might look like. Adding visuals and KPIs in text tables can make the text tables more intuitive and more engaging. However, this comes with trade-offs. The table will be more complex. There will be more components and calculated fields to manage. And if we have many items that may require scrolling, we need to do additional work to synchronize the behavior. As a recap, in this tutorial, we step through different strategies we can use to add KPIs, spark lines, and conditional formatting for our text tables. We also went over some common tricks like using our own axes, using the Gantt bar mark, and creating transparent color palettes. I hope you found this video useful. I hope you were able to find some new tips or tricks. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time, and I will see you again next time.